Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Today we'll be continuing our Everything Wrong series with the Battle of Kamino. We've once again collaborated with Clone Wars expert Geetsley, who being from the Southern Hemisphere, or as I like to call it, upside down, is enjoying the optimism and beauty that only spring can bring. So naturally, he'll be doing the Everything Right version of this video. Which means, yes, I'll be doing the Everything Wrong version of this video, which, to be honest, I'm not so keen on doing all the time because I do love Star Wars, all its flaws included. But because we are dealing with Kamino and I'm a huge fan of the Clone Troopers, especially the Legends version of them, I have a few gripes with this episode. For those of you who don't know, Kamino is home to the Cloning Center for the Grand Army of the Republic. It's basically a giant sperm bank. As far as canon goes, Kamino is the sole place where clones are created which is a terrible idea. The destruction of the facilities there would essentially destroy the GAR's entire stock of troopers. A real symbolic kick in the nuts. So the Separatists launch an attack on the planet with a sizable fleet, and the GAR meet them with their own sizable armada of over a dozen Venator-class Star Destroyers, which seems like a lot, but if Kamino is one of the most important planets to the Republic war effort, why doesn't it have orbital battle stations? Why doesn't it have a planetary shield, like Scarif? Does one not wear a cup when playing contact sports? Anyway, Grievous carries out a Trojan horse type of attack by hiding aqua droids and trident assault ships in falling debris, which is a great idea. Protection only works if you're aware you're being penetrated. The Separatist ploy works and bypasses the Republic blockade, but if Kamino is anything like Earth, re-entry should be tricky without the proper vectoring. Usually when you apply friction to an oddly shaped object that is full of robot semen, an explosion usually follows. Although it is possible that in Star Wars they have materials that are extremely strong and can numb the effects of high intensity heat caused by re-entry. Planet side, we met Clone Trooper 99, who unfortunately has a few genetic defects which have severely deformed him, making him unfit for combat duty. He's easily one of the more likable characters in this episode, a Quasimodo in space, if you will. But having said that, if you really knew who the Kaminoans were, and by that I mean read the Republic Commando novels, you would understand that not only would 99 not be running around handing grenades to people, he would be dead. The Kaminoans would have put him down like a Miller Lite loving Budweiser horse, turned him into paste, and then baked that paste into nutrition squares and fed it to 99's fellow brothers. I would argue that they are 25% of the reason why I hate aliens and consider myself a speciesist. The other reason is those blue bestiality-loving monkeys from Avatar. The Kaminoans were basically walking, talking Nazi dolphin sciences. They probably tasted like fish, but not a good fish like bronzini or salmon. I imagine they tasted like gray, rotting fish with a very fishy smell. Having said that, I would consider consuming them just to show my pure hatred of them. I would probably use a lot of lemon juice, maybe some honey Dijon dressing. Yeah, death to the aliens. Humanity first. Anyway, the Separatist squid-like assault ships began carrying out their attack on Tipico City, which is a group of extremely fragile-looking structures. It's basically a bunch of giant disc-like buildings on stilts. On top of that, there's no navy defending the structure both above and below the water. There aren't any underwater mines. There's not even weapons emplacements. Again, this is the only location that produces clones in the galaxy. Which brings us to the obvious conclusion that Equifax must be in charge of security on this structure. But the droids are equally stupid. Even though their real goal is to steal some effet DNA, much more effective assault method would have been to just blow up the supporting struts of the city, sending it crashing down into the ocean. The clones had no defense underwater, and there weren't even any scuba troopers on Kamino. The aqua droids would have had a clear advantage. But instead, the aqua droids are used on dry land and lined up in a long single file line just waiting to be gunned down. And on the other side, the clone troopers are not taking cover, which as you all probably know by now is one of my largest pet peeves. Unless you're dressed like British Ben at one of his fancy dinner parties, you should always take cover when using a firearm. Also, the DNA chamber with FET genetic material, completely empty. No laser grids, security guards, or even blast doors. Ventress just walks in without resistance. As the battle draws to a close, Echo 5's Rex, Cody, and 99, along with a few cadets, carry out a desperate last stand. The clone troopers draw the fire of the Separatists advancing through the barracks while the cadets hide in sleeping pods above the room. Once the droids have advanced far enough, the cadets pop out and start firing. While this might seem like a good ambush, it's actually not the smartest move. Because these cadets, unlike the grown clone troopers, have no path to retreat. Should things go wrong, they're just stuck in those pods. This is also why in real life soldiers don't climb trees to carry out ambushes. They might get a few shots off, but once the enemy knows where they are, they're stuck. This is also the scene where 99 dies, in a heroic attempt to grab more grenades for the clone troopers. Disney wants us to believe that disabled people are just as capable as everyone else. 
That's a great message when executed correctly, but Disney completely screws this up. First of all, 99 is a complete character of what a disabled person is. He has a droopy face, a limp, and a hunch in his back. His only contributions are pointing out obvious targets, Look up! There's more! Knowing where the grenades are, the grenades. and handing those grenades to more able-bodied troopers. Because obviously, 99 can't throw grenades, he's disabled! And if that's not messed up enough, even the clung cadets are treated as more capable soldiers and given blasters. Why doesn't 99 have a blaster? He obviously can fire one, he has thumbs like me. And when 99 makes that final desperate attempt to grab the grenades, he's told by Rex that he can't. 99, you can't! I'm a soldier, like you! And that points out to be true. 99 is way too slow, and he dies a pointless but heroic death. 99 is a great character. He has a great heart and a winning personality to go along with it. But in the end, it wasn't his body or disability who failed him. It was the writers of this episode, which is what I hope they write on his tombstone. In the end, this was a very interesting episode, but for those of us who love the Clone Troopers, it just wasn't enough. This really should have been a three-part story arc. I wanted to see more of what life was like on Kamino. The battle itself would have been less hurried, and 99 could have gotten the character arc he deserved. Well guys, that's all we have for you today. Don't forget to hop on over to Geetsley's channel and check out his version of this video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. Special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. Remember, a good Kaminoan is a dead one, dipped in honey Dijon sauce with a lot of lemon juice. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.